Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the studies for this week. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Uh, dear Father in heaven, thank you for the time that we have here this morning for each person that has joined us. And we ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit can be here to teach us. Um, we know, Lord, that there's still many things we have not sorted out, and we need your guidance and help in understanding these things. And um, we pray, Lord, that uh, uh, you can bless each person in their personal study. And um, we pray for this movement, for the people in it, and help us, Lord, to represent you in all that we do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Well, good morning, everyone. So um, we've been going through uh, judges and now trying to uh, get an overview of these lines. And uh, we've addressed some of the chronological issues. Now, um, so... What is it that we need to do? What is it that, that that's the most pressing as far as as finishing off this line of the judges? We were dealing with the death of Joshua and how that relates. How what is what are the loose ends that we still have to Anybody know? Nobody remembers what we were doing? I know it was a long time ago. A lot of things have happened. Okay, so well, let's let's look at something first. Um, it's not directly from our study of the judges, though it does relate to our lines. So Angela has a comment there, which we'll come back to. Okay, so on Friday evening before uh, the, the study, and we mentioned this yesterday, though it wasn't recorded or anything, um, we had noticed that, and that we have from July 18 uh, to September 11th, 6,885 days. <clears throat> so this is something I noticed a long time ago, obviously, because I have the calendar converter and it gives me the span of times between dates, and I place these dates on that calendar converter many times. Now, um, what I had not thought of doing, and, and that's because I was looking at all these first days of the first month and is looking at these spans of time, um, and looking at different ways to measure spans of time. So we can, of course, count days, we can count hours, we can count minutes, we can count seconds, we can count uh, months, both lunar and um, uh, synodic months, that is, uh, you know, or prophetic months. So the lunar are what we call synodic months. And, and then we have uh, prophetic months of 30 days. But we have another symbol of months, which I had not applied to this, and that is a sidereal month. Now, that's probably not known by many people what a sidereal month is, but this would be uh, sidereal just means in relation to the stars. So if we are going to look at the orbit of the moon around the Earth in relation to the stars, 
not in relation to the sun because we're orbiting the sun. And so that changes. So basically every time we have uh, 13 sidereal months, we have 12 lunar months. Does that make sense to people? Because we're going around the sun. Now, it's not quite exact because we don't completely go around the sun in that period of time. Um, so, it, but it, it's it's close. Then that's because, you know, the 12 months when we completely go around the sun is 12 months and about uh, 10 days, right? Um, but does that make sense to people that because we're orbiting the sun, what we see as the full moon is not really the time it takes for the moon to orbit uh, the earth. But that's, does that make sense to people? Does somebody not understand that concept? It's just like uh, uh, a sidereal day. A sidereal day is about four minutes less than a solar day, right? So in, in, a, in when the Earth goes around the sun, um, there's one day that disappears uh, in relation to the stars because the Earth uses up that day when it goes around the sun. So so sometimes you'll hear that a day is, you know, 23 hours and uh, 56 minutes or something like that. But that's actually how long a day is. It's not 24 hours. But that's a sidereal day. And so if you take up those four minutes, um, you're going to get, uh, it's going to be, Roughly, I mean, if you multiplied four by 360, you'd get 1,460, but it's it's really slightly less than four minutes. So you would get an entire day. You'd get those four minutes, just slightly less than four minutes, would be added, right? So there's 300, and, in a sidereal year, there's 366 sidereal days, right, in in a year that's based on sidereal days, not 365. So 366 and a quarter. Does anybody not, does that not make sense? Is anybody has trouble understanding that concept? I think what we're gonna to have to do is to look at this for ourselves to solidify this in our minds. Yeah, I know it's hard for people sometimes to visualize um, these things because I know I wrote a paper on it and Stephen read it and he said he couldn't understand it at all. So that's what I was saying. But anyway, there is a sidereal month. You can look it up and it'll tell you, sometimes it'll say it's 72.3 days. Sometimes they'll say 72.32, uh, but it's 72.321661 days in length. So that's our sidereal month. So that's how long a sidereal month is. So you can see the symbol of 27. Point three there now yeah, i was thinking 27 not 72 right 20, um what's that what was the 72 72 yeah you were saying 72 oh, no. i don't know why i said 72 it's 27.321661 days so it's 27.3 is usually how it's stated. You know, if you just Google, it'll say a sidereal month is 27.3 days, which is a symbol of the Levites, the 27th day of the third month. But if we multiply that by 252, that will give us the number of days from 9-11 to July 18th. So that's pretty profound. Now we know from November 9th, 2019, is 252 days. So of course, that proportion then uh, of that whole period is 27.321661 uh, to one, right? So if you took 
from 9-11-2019 to July 18, 2020, that's 21.321661 uh, parts of that whole period of 6,885 days. So, so it ties in 9-11, 11-9, and July 18th into the structure. Plus, if we look at lunar years, so lunar years are years based upon um, 12 lunar months. So if you take 666 days, 666 days, um, or, what am I saying? 6,633 days. I'm trying to do a calculation while talking. Um, this is going to be 18 lunar years. So um, simple way of looking at this is 6633 divided by 354. So it ends up being 18.5 seven lunar years. So again, we have the symbol for July 18th in the number of years between 11.9 and 9.11 or 9.11 and 11.9. <clears throat> so, so what's the significance of this as related to what we're studying now? It's not, so one is we have the 358, three, 3,548 days from the end of the 777 in 1991, so December 25th, 1991, to 911. And if we go from July 18, 2020, it's also 3,548 days to April 5th, 2030. So, so we could, can we say that's significant? It would seem to be. Yeah. Yeah, it would be see it would be hard for me to just say, well, this is a coincidence because we spent so much time establishing April 5th, 2030. And um we know all, all of these dates already. So it, it seems to me that this has to be uh something that would not be considered a coincidence. Now, within this movement, now hardly anybody knows about April 5th, 2030, right? Um, they're not looking at it, not studying it. We've spent uh, in, the, in studying the judges that this becomes a really important date as far as the structure of our prophetic lines. And um, Now, um, it, it's also interesting that uh, this number of days is um, basically it's, it's 130 uh, sidereal months, right? So from July 18 to April 5th, 2030 is uh, 130 sidereal months. And what would be the significance of that? Okay, so um, Angela is saying that this confirms Psalm 19. Okay, so Psalm 19, day unto day uttereth speech, night unto night showeth knowledge. There's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. And of course, it starts out, the heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament showeth his handiwork. That must be what you mean, right? So we know that uh, the sun, the moon, the stars, these are given for signs, for seasons, for days and years. And we can see that these all apply in these structures. Now, we also have on this chart, um, so we have the 133 uh, sidereal months. So if you go... So that 3,548 days could be represented that way. 
Um, what would that mean? Would you restate your question, please? Okay, so from December 25th, 1991 to September 11th, 2001 is 130 sidereal months. And from July 18 to April 2020 to April 5th, 2030 is also 130 sidereal months. So we have 130 sidereal months and then 252 sidereal months and then another 130 sidereal months on either side, going from December 25th, 1991 to April 5th, 2030. So altogether, that is 512 sidereal months, which is, uh, what's the significance of 512? Iran, the number 512, what's the significance of it? That's two, <clears throat> two to the ninth power. So it could be a symbol for the Sunday law. Yeah. Yeah, it's two to the ninth power, right? So the reason why he knows that is because this has to do with uh, 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 basically bytes, right? It has to do with the binary system of doubling of, of, of information, right? Is that a way to yeah. explain it? Yeah. Yeah, so... You know, so you would talk about getting a, you know, a 250 uh, megabyte hard drive at one time, 256. Of course, it wouldn't store that much information, but, uh, you know, so you would, you would double this number. So that's two times two times two times two times two, right? You can two and two is four, four and four is eight, eight and eight is 16, 32, 64, right? 128, 256, 512. Now, Iran says in number numbers is 777. So, yeah, um, so it's 777 verses plus 512 is the total of verses, and or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> it's actually one less than that, but that's how it works out in the book of numbers. So, in the book of numbers. There's 777 plus 512 verses. That is, if you go, you can go to a place in the book of Numbers where it says that it's the 777th verse and it's the 512th reverse verse. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, so it's the, what you would call a complement in the book of Numbers. Yeah, it, give, it gives you the 777 structure that ends in the second day of the ninth month, um, 20, 20th day of the ninth month. Yes, and, and 512 is 9 to the power of 2. Okay, and, and we can see in our diagram that we what we have is uh, that begins on at the end of the 777 for, uh, that starts with the time of the end, right? So that period of time here that begins November 9th, 1989 in the 777 days to December 25th, 1991, the fall of the Soviet Union. That's the period of time in which the Soviet Union falls, right? And then we're going to have uh, 514 verses brings us, or verses, uh, sidereal months brings us to April 5th, 2030. So that's 130. Now, what about 130 itself? That's a symbol of 13, correct? Yes. Yeah. And, and we know like 13 days, for instance, is 18720 minutes. So um, I don't know if there's other ways we could look at these periods of days. Now, lunar months, of course, are longer. So we're going to have 504 lunar months from November 9th, 1989, which is the 10th day of the eighth month on the biblical calendar, to August 10th, 2030, which is the 10th day of the fifth month. August 10th, of course, 
is the 10th day of the eighth month, um, but on the Gregorian calendar. And the 10th day of the fifth month is the biblical date for the destruction of Jerusalem. And that's going to be 127 days after April 5th, 2030. So what's the significance of 127? Twelfth day of the seventh month, but I'm trying to think of why that would be. Well, how about this? Just in reverse, it's July 21st. All right, that works. Yeah. So, so like it's midnight. midnight. <clears throat> yeah. So it's a symbol for midnight, and um, so we can see here just in this structure, and and what we've been doing in the story of the judges is we've been connecting these dates. We, we've dealt with, of course, the time of the end date, and we dealt with that first 777 days. And we've obviously dealt with 9-11 because we know it's 354 months from September 11th to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. And so in 2030, we have, of course, the first day of the first month marked. That's the, the primary one. Um, yeah, you also have the 12 times 7 on the chart, which is uh, 84. Um, but anyway, then you have, uh, you know, now we have the 10th day of the fifth month in 2030. So we have the 10th day of the seventh month, the 10th day of the fifth month, and of course, the first day of the first month. So those have all been marked. And I could easily just add, um, you know, from September 11th, I could add the the... 354 prophetic months going to the 10th day of the seventh month on this chart. I just didn't include it on here. So we have all of these symbols and probably more. There's probably more connections that we could see. Um, the 252 sidereal months, though, which is the one we found Friday night, to me becomes very significant. It's... Um, because what we have been doing in these studies is showing uh, that 9-11, because prior to this study, I, I never had any, anything chronological for 9-11, at least not many things um, uh, that, that showed this in, a, in, in, in this way. I mean, we have things like... Uh, um, you know, that would relate to people's individual lines. You know, for instance, if we go um, from 9-11, uh, we go from Stephen when he's born, right? It's going to be 11,900 days, which is that uh, period of days that that um, that is, it's going to be the same Islamic date, um, right? So the Islamic calendar comes around and lines up with, uh, uh, comes around again. So that's 32, point, 32 years and seven months on uh, the Gregorian calendar. And it's 33 three years and seven months on the Islamic calendar. But that's not really something independent that supports 9-11 as part of the structure. So that's maybe one of the first things I've seen that we could connect it like to Stevens the day he was born. But we saw that we could connect this to um, 2030, which is connected to Millerite history, right? So we're taking the first day of the first month in Millerite history and the 10th day of the seventh month in Millerite history. And it's obviously going to be 2,300 months from the first day of the first month. Uh, in Millerite history to April 5th, 2030, as well as 2,300 months from the 10th day of the seventh month in Millerite history to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. Um, and it's going to be 186 uh, biblical years. Either way you measure it from either date, it's going to be the same, plus 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months is 2,300 months. And um, 
But the thing is, we can take this April 5th, 2030, and the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030, and connect it to 9-11, either by counting the month in which 9-11 occurs as the first month, and that 354 uh, um, lunar months would end on April 5th, 2030, as the first day of the first month. So that would be line up with Ezra, uh, the story of Ezra, the chronology of Ezra. Or we could just start with um, 454 prophetic months and start on 9-11 itself, and it ends exactly on uh, August or October 8th, which is the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. So here we could then connect 9-11 uh, with that history, right? So, so connecting 9-11 chronologically um, in this very precise way, we were not able to do prior to this these studies that we did um, in understanding the lines. So, so I think it's extremely important uh, point because we have something that shows 9-11, but it shows it only if we take into account this information, right? Otherwise, we've never been able to take 9-11 and place it on a line chronologically as we did uh, with November 9th and July 18th, right? So now we can do that with 9-11. And, um, and even with November 9th, 1989, we had done it with the 2,600 years, right? So we had done it in that way, uh, but now we actually have much more precise measurements for it. Now, so in our study of the judges, we we're going to be looking at the chronology in a lot more detail, right? That is, we want to sort out the chronology of the judges. Now, um, now Stephen is the one who's who spent the most time understand trying to understand the chronology of the judges, and we have a lot of uncertainty as to that chronology. Um, do we have to get rid of that uncertainty in the book of Judges? Is it necessary that we do so? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear that. Well, in the book of Judges, we have all this uncertainty, right? We're not sure exactly how to address the 300 years of Ellen, that Ellen White talks about of the ark being in Shiloh or the 300 years um, uh, where the Moabites are, are saying that, um, well, I guess it's going to be Jephthah saying that the Moabites could have re recovered the land. Um, so whether it's, in act it's actually 300 years or more, um, we haven't resolved that issue. And the question is, do we have to? I mean, can we just accept that we don't understand the chronology of the judges completely? Or, or do we believe that we have to resolve that chronology? Well, maybe not need to, but uh, the desire is there. Okay, so, well, yeah, so there's a desire there. I mean, obviously, that's, that's always been there, right, to sort out the chronology. But what, what I'm saying is we have all of this symbolic dates in, symbolic spans in, in the, the story of the judges, right? So we can, we can look at this period of, of time of the judges. We know that it fits into a certain span of time that's given to us from first king six verse one right so we can't dismiss that right we we know that that chronology has to be correct in first kings and and we've shown that because with that chronology we have all of these different structures that show up but what we have in the story of the judges itself is we can create a same book symbolic structure. So for instance, if we take this chart, again, we look at it, um, that Stephen 
had done. And, and we, we say, well, here is uh, the spans of time as given in the Bible, but there's maybe some overlap. We don't know. Um, we can say, well, here we have these symbols at the beginning and at the end, but we know that this is not the correct chronology. Brother Theodore? Yeah. On uh, December 25th, 1991, was that the first day of the first month? No. No, it's not the first day of the first month. It's... Uh... You just hit it up there. How do you get a chance to... Yeah, that's going to be the 18th day of the ninth month. 18th day of the ninth month. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah, so so we can look at this. You know, these are the spans of time given in the Bible. We could divide them as 66 years and 66 years on either side with 187 years in the center. Right, So, so we can do that. But we, we don't think that that represents the actual uh, span, 319 years, because there's some overlap in there, right? Where exactly that overlap is, isn't, isn't certain. What's that? That was what we discussed, yes. Yeah, okay. So, so we, can, we can look at something symbolically. So this is the struggle that we have. We have... We have things that are symbols, but they're not, but they don't have to be actual. But we do believe that there is a chronology that is actual, that that things actually happen in history. And if we, we could go back in time and we could live through that history, uh, we would see that, you know, the dates and spans and the times in the Bible are real, right? They're not, they're not just symbolic dates. It's not some fairy tale that was put together about something that didn't happen or it's not just imaginary spans of time that are put there just for symbolic purposes. We believe that those dates are actual dates. Right. Yes. So, right. So, so we believe that there is an underlying reality of those dates, that there is also a symbolic representation of a span of time as being 300 years we know that that 300 years could be rounded down. It could be an approximate time because it's not it's not being addressed, you know, that it has been exactly 300 years. It's just, you had 300 years to do this. And we, we can say those types of things, you know. You know, you have two years to do something and it could be less than two years or more than two years, right? Because we round things up and down. We're not gonna say, you know, it's been two years, three months, and five days, and 10 hours and 15 minutes. And Nobody you, talks like that. Yeah, you could have cleaned your room in that time, and you haven't, right? Right. So, right. So people don't talk like that. And so we don't expect that it's only going to be mentioned in the Bible when it's actually exactly 300 years, right? But when you have something like uh, in 1 Kings 16, verse 1, and it says it's in the 480th year since the, the coming out or the going out of the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Um, you know, that's a little more precise, the 480th year. Right. You can see when you say something's you're giving an ordinal count for one. It usually means that you're being precise. Right. Yes. Yeah. OK. And, and and so so we and we have to sort of uh, distinguish those from when you just talk about you know you had 300 years to do something or it's the 300 300th year since an event you could see 300th year would be more precise than saying it was 300 years right because you wouldn't say 300th year if it's if it's approximate agreeable yeah and and that seems to be uh, how the bible understands these times so 
So we know the period of the span of the judges. We know how long it is from when they crossed the Jordan River to when Solomon laid the foundation of, his temp of, of the temple. So we know how long, long then it was that, and we know how long it was that David reigned, and we know how long it was that Saul reigned. And we can go to 1097 BC to show that that's when the 490 years uh, commences, where they cease to... Uh, give the land rest and that's going to be 490 years till daniel is taken captive so we've been able to show all these things we have these precise things but in the period of judges if we can't sort out the exact chronology um so if we we have to guess you know when was eli born and how old was he um you know when he anointed saul um or Samuel anointed Saul. So how old was Samuel? So when was Eli born? When did he die? When was Samuel um, born? You know, how old was he? All these different things. If we don't get them sorted out, is that a problem if we can still apply symbolic uh, spans? That is, here we have this symbolic span, though we don't know if it's actual, right? Is it important that we that we have to have it actual before it has any symbolic meaning? And do we have to have these sorted out before we can give them any meaning? That's sort of the question. Well, I'm not quite sure uh, if we would, if it would be that big of a deal if we, if we couldn't find those things out. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, not that it's not relevant. It's just it might not be relevant for our needs. But mm. you know, um, we need to be thorough. Yeah. Now, now what Stephen has figured out is is quite important. That is, he knows what we don't know. Right. He knows where the problems are. Right. He knows what the uncertainties are. And I think that's an important point. Right? Yes. Because we know what, what, what possibilities exist as far as sorting out the chronology. Him and I have some different views on it because I don't think Samuel is as old as he says. But we don't know exactly where, because we know that um, uh, Samuel and e Eli are connected to the, the Philistines, right? And so we have the story of Samson, and we're not really sure where the story of Samson fits, right? That is... You're talking about timing. Timing, yeah. Exactly where, Sam, you know, when Samson is born, right? We don't know this because... Um, but, we, but we know that there is different parts of Israel that have judges, and... Um, we don't know specifically if they overlap or where they might overlap. I mean, we know possibilities. We know places where they don't overlap, where there seems to be a clear succession of judges. But even then, when you deal with something like Philistine oppression, we know that it can cover a period of, of you know, where there's more, there's more going on. So, so that's part of the problem. So we just don't know. But we can lay them up like out like this, and we can see that even if these overlap somewhere, that these spans of time still have symbolic import, right? We, we just... We, yes. They, right, okay. Because they don't have to be the actual span of time in order for it to be meaningful because those spans are given to us. Right. And people just add up these spans and then they say, well, that's the whole length of the period of the judges without without considering any possible overlap. And and it creates problems. People have the, the period of the judges is the most confusing part of biblical chronology, as far as I'm concerned, right? Which is why I knew that how long the period was, but I didn't try to sort out 
I, I mean, I put some in my structure of prophetic chronology, I put Gerard Goteau's solution to the period of the judges, but I don't think his is correct, but I put it there because it was just an option. He's somebody who, who fits in the same span of time that we have taking these judges, right? So, so that's one thing that we're going to have to look at, though. We're going to have to understand uh, w what it is we don't know about the period of the judges. So Stephen's going to provide that for us somewhere along the way, even if it, it's not until the camp meeting in July, because that's what I want him to present on. Um, because I do think all of these things are relevant as far as understanding um, our history. Now, now, what do I mean by that? So when we look at our history, do we have a lot of uncertainties? Are there things that we don't understand about our own history at the present time? Got a, got a, a lot of information. Do okay, we know there's a lot of, not yeah, sure. There, yeah, so there's a lot of information. We have lots of information about our history, right? Because we've been living through it, we've been studying it as we've been moving through it. Um, but the uncertainties lie in the future, for the most part, and. And, and the uncertainties in the book of Judges, I think, much more lie near the end of the book of Judges, or really once you get into uh, the book of Samuel, when you start to deal with uh, that history of, of Eli and Samuel. And so, so that's really the end of the period of the Judges. And when we look at, at um, I'm just trying to find this chart that we had remember where I put it. Um, Cause we're, we're, so we made an appeal to the Canadian group, not, not yesterday, but uh, the Sabbath before ab about the camp meeting. Right. And so we had put that on a line um, of what we think is coming. So that's going to be in Samson's line. Oh, here it is. Right. So we, we put April 8th, 2023 on a line as a formalization of a message. And then we put July 24th, the start of the camp meeting in 2023, as the empowerment. Right. So that's going to be the formalization of the second angel and now the empowerment. And, but this is the future. Well, April 8th isn't but July 24th is. And to see whether that is the empowerment uh, would also see whether April 8th, 2023 was actually the formalization. Right? Yes. So, so we have this uncertainty about our near future. And then we also have a date on this line here of Samson and Delilah, which is the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030 and and then we also have uh we say that this is prior to the sunday law itself how much prior we have no idea and we don't know if that date is an actual date or just a symbolic date that is are these events going to come sooner are they going to be later maybe nothing happens on that date um but we believe that there's a symbolic period of time given to this movement at the present. And, and so we can see how symbolic periods of time in the book of Judges that we don't know their actual span can be significant. We see that in our own time, we have symbolic periods when we don't really know their actual span in our time. And that it's, that it's, in some ways, uh, the unfolding of the chronology of the book of Judges will relate as we go through our history. 
That is, we may not understand these things until we pass them. Now, what's the importance of that concept that I just talked about? Seems like somewhat of a test. Yeah, so how is this difference from time will tell? Well, we've actually used dates that were tangible. Okay, but, but we don't know what those dates mean. And we're not saying time will tell, are we? You understand what I'm saying by that? Yeah, you're okay, I'm having a hard time understanding you, Ron. I'm afraid. sorry. I'm trying to keep my voice down. My wife was still asleep. Okay. So, so uh, we know. That, so, did you hear that? I mean, the other stuff. Okay. No, um, I didn't hear the other stuff. Now, Iran says the symbols exist now. The events will be seen later. Okay, can you explain what you mean by that, Iran? It's just, uh, if there is any event, you'll, you'll see it later, but you can see the symbol right now. Okay, and, right. The symbol, and the symbol right now gives us information for the present, right? Yes. Yep. So, so God gives us light for our feet so that we can make the correct decision about the path we are on now. Yes. Okay. Now, if, if we have a time will tell sort of attitude, this is more a prediction about something in the future that's uncertain. And, and we kind of don't really know if we're making the right decision until we get whether that thing happens or not that we predict. And that's different. So the time will tell idea has has in it an inherent danger and what is that danger um, building people up and then they they collapse so yeah if it doesn't occur as we expect then people lose faith right correct yeah so so there's there's that danger that people are going to have their, their hearts set on something happening in a certain frame of time. And they're kind of like, well, I don't know if I believe it or not. Now, of course, some people say, I believe it, it has to be certain. But if you say time will tell, and it doesn't happen, then you, you've weakened a person's faith, maybe even your own. And, and we learned this from July 18, 2020. That is, we should have learned it. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> what was what was Parminder's error as in as it relates to chronology? It's kind of a tricky question. What was Parminder doing wrong? when he was predicting events on certain dates. So when he predicted- you know, but I'm, I'm sure of all this. Is that, how I, is that how I read this? Well, okay, so back in 2012, he predicted the Sunday law in 2014. So he, he made an error, but he was correct, right? The 2014 date is significant. And, and in some ways, you could say it is the Sunday law on a certain line in our movement. We would place it as the Sunday law. Right. Okay. So, so what was his error? I've always discussed this before. Okay, well, I don't know what you said, but anybody else? What was what was Parminder's error? Because Jeff labeled it fanaticism when Parminder made this prediction, and Jeff wasn't wrong. Okay, it was time setting. Now, 
are we to sit due to time setting? No, Ellen, we're not supposed to. Ellen White's quite clear about it, right? So it was obviously wrong. Now, now Parminder had a an argument that Jeff accepted in 2018. So June 10th, 2018, Parminder is going to present the, you know, the day after uh, the Sabbath on the Sunday after Jeff's 9-11 prayer that commences the 126 days uh, to October 13th, 2018, right? And so Parminder is going to present an argument and Jeff is going to accept the argument. Now, what was the argument that, I know people weren't there, but we saw the argument later. What was the, the argument that Jeff said that convinced him about the fact that the movement was going to set time? It was go going to time set. And how did Jeff address that? And not everybody here knows what that was, but. Well, my guess, right, would be, my guess would be Miller Wright um, parallel. Okay, so there's a Millerite parallel. So, so if we're repeating Millerite history, and we have time in the message, it only makes sense uh, that time must exist in the movement, and that is actually a valid argument, right? Parminder is correct. Now, as far as his other argument, though. He, he hid his argument initially. Uh, what he was arguing was a dispensational argument. That is, he was saying that we're in a different dispensation. That is, uh, and we're going to see this uh, come out later in 2019, but we don't see it in 2018. Parminder doesn't present a dispensational argument initially. Right? Now, there is a partial dispensational argument that is a good kind of argue well we've contradicted Ellen White's direct statements before regarding public evangelism and that's quite kind of not true um, we didn't think that you know public evangelism evangelism isn't important we just knew that where we, the movement was at the time that there was an internal work that needed to be done that we couldn't be just bringing people into our movement doing public evangelism because we don't, we don't have a church. We don't have anything to bring people to. Um, and so, you know, that's really not uh, a valid uh, way of looking at, at, at it. We weren't just rejecting Ellen White's statements. We were actually accepting what she was saying <coughs> and recognizing where we were in our lives. So we just were at a time that we couldn't, we couldn't evangelize, you know, publicly. We weren't going to be doing big evangelistic campaigns and trying to bring people into the movement. So that was the no more public evangelism, which was totally misunderstood by many people in the movement. You know, it's almost like we couldn't witness to anyone, and that wasn't the case. It was public evangelism that was being talked about. Um, so anyway, Parminder's error was time setting. That is, it was in time setting in contravention of Ellen White's plain statements regarding time setting. So when we got to 2000, um, uh, well, in 2018, we got to October, and I did the measurement of the 391.5 days, confirming November 9th, 2019 was prophetically significant, and that I was measuring... Um, at noon on November, October 13th, I was measuring this span of time and that I was actually walking over the ground of fulfilled prophecy. I was passing that ground. And at that moment, I did this measurement and I could confirm that. And then this was followed by um, understanding July 18th, 2020. Uh, by early November, we had well-established uh, the July 18, 2020 Gregorian, as well as the Julian date. Um, I made an argument at that camp meeting uh, in, that started on October 16th, I think, um, that, that we weren't time setting. So 
So Parminder believes he is time setting. I'm arguing that we're not time setting. So why do I make the argument that we're not time setting? What was my basis for that argument? That we couldn't set time, even though we were, we were looking at dates in the future. That we were parallel. Okay. Well, what I was saying is that we weren't setting time on the big line, that what we were doing was setting time that related to our line, that is internally, right? So as that Rand says, not the second coming, it's internal. So I understood that if we had time in our movement, it had to be internal. It could not relate to external events. Yet we had this July 18, 2020, which was an external event. And my argument at the time was, well, this is not a promise of special significance. That is, we were not predicting any of these events that Ellen White had said that we shouldn't predict. Uh, we had all of this evidence pointing to this date and connecting it to her Nashville prediction. And that was in God's providence that we were doing that. Now, I also came to understand that it was on a line of failed predictions, right? So that there was a chance that it may not occur, um, but that we still needed to warn Nashville. So the whole basis that we had um, for setting a date like July 18th, uh, at least my understanding of it, is that this is something internal, relates to this movement. And I know that external events were witnessing to our movement. So for instance, we had the 100 days of prayer beginning on March 27th, 2020, right? So by the time we got there and we knew that it was gonna end on July 4th, 2020, um, we had all of these, these chronological structures witnessing to uh, the validity of the date that we were setting. But I understood that it could fail, right? And so on April 26th, 2020, I sent Jeff an email explaining this, which was basically ignored. That is, he said he would look at it. He would watch the video that we had done in our Friday night study um, and that he would get back to me. And he began to present things that I thought were leading to him ultimately presenting that this prediction could fail, but he never did present it. It is, he never ended up presenting my argument. And uh, so I've gone through that before, how, you know, that it, it was basically rejected, not because they put it up on the website and took it down and then had an excuse that it had uh, references in it, links, right? And that I had to take the links out. So I took the links out, they put it up, it was up for a day and they took it down with no comment of why they were taking it down. So I knew that there was not an acceptance of the chance that the prediction could fail. And of course the prediction failed, but we understood in the failure of that prediction that we were fulfilling Millerite history, that time was attached to this movement. But that meant that what was happening was not something on the big line, right? That is, what we'd experienced was not midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law of Jeff's line, right? When I say the big line, that's Jeff's line, the big line of our, our line from 1989 uh, to the Sunday law. That's the line that we have, right? That's, that's the line of this movement. And all of these things, July 18th, are not on that line, right? We can't. Put July 18th on that line, can we? If, if we put it on its line, the only way that we can do that is to take Millerite history and look at Samuel Snow's letters, right? Correct. Samuel Snow's letters end on July 18th. Then you have the three days, and we address the three days. They represent that period of time, the three days from the story of Ezra. And, and that's going to lead to uh, 
December 25th, 2021, the 20th day of the ninth month. So we can see that from July 18th, 2020 to December 25th, 2021 is the three days call to Jerusalem, right? Well, is this one of the three days that we could see? Yes, it's one of them. But the, the application that we're making with July 18th to December 25th in in the realm of we're going to have the first day of the 10th month, right? So then we know from uh, December 25th, 2021, we're going to have this span of time that's going to go to Colin's prediction, right? Because Colin's going to make a prediction on December 25th, 2021 regarding Trump. And that prediction is going to lead to January 11th, 2023. And that's going to be the first day of the 10th month, right? Okay, but I, I have an odd question for you. Yeah. You're making the, the symbolic application of the three days with these other these other presentations. Mm -hmm. What if there's a further symbolic representation regarding the camp meeting that we're addressing? Three days dealing with the camp meeting? Yeah. What if those three days are the 24th? What if what if we're what if those three days are also three symbolic years? Well, it's possible too, right? But but I don't want to jump to another line here. So I'm just addressing this line, this line right. where we have July 18th and how we made the application of uh, Samuel Snow's letter. So when we look at our disappointment of July 18th. We know there is three days before midnight. And so December 25th, 2021 is not midnight. But what we have, what we have done is we're zooming into a way mark that represents midnight. So July 18, 2020 is, is a way mark on a line. And, and we need to address exactly what line and what way mark, right? So we, we know July 18th is way marks on different lines. But in a line where it is the disappointment, it's it's July 18, 1844 disappointment. That is, it's Samuel Snow's last letter typifying October 22nd, 1844, which is the Sunday law, right? So the mistake that, that we could make is we could say July 18, 2020 was our disappointment. It's the great disappointment. And so, um, so that means we came to, the, to October 22nd, 1844. But we know in that bigger line of Jeff's, October 22nd, 1844 represents the Sunday law. And it resents, represents the Sunday law as it exists in the United States, right? The national Sunday law. That's what we mean by the Sunday law. And we have not come to that event yet. So that means our July 18th, 2020 to December 25th, 2021 was typifying that event, right? So that's how we understand that. And so then we have Colin's prediction, which comes on December 25th, 2021. And that's going to be, um, that was the date that we had symbolically as the Sunday law. Right. So we, we just had it as the Sunday law. And um, but we know that that's going to lead to this first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month, which is going to be this period of three months in which the divorce occurs. And so in relation to that line of July 18, 2020, being a parallel with October 22nd, 1844, and we can make that parallel. But in that line itself, it's still Samuel Snow's letters line. And so what you can do is you can take the three days. So this is what, what Dwight is saying, I believe, is you can take the three days from July 18, 2020, and you can count to 2023, July 24th, and you could apply the three days in that way, right? So there's just another application of the three days. Correct. Right. 
but but that's another line, right? So so I'm just addressing this line here. So we get a line that brings us up to uh, January 11th, 2023 to January 12th, 2023, that dividing point. And we're now in the period of the divorcement. So that's what this movement is going through at the present time. We're going through the divorcement from the strange wives. And this is done according to the law, right? That when they, they do this divorcement, it's done according to the law. What does that mean in the context of, of Ezra chapter 10? What, what does it mean in according, according to the law when they go through this divorcing their strange wives? Just in the literal sense, what are they doing? They are following what was laid down in the first five books of the Bible. Okay. So, and what, what is that? So what is, what does it mean? Just from a practical sense, when the divorce in the strange wise, what are they doing from a practical sense? They are recognizing that they had <clears throat> not entered into a proper covenant okay so how are those wives treated as if they had never been married okay well that's okay that's not quite exactly what happens uh they I, have to I be they were going to take care of weren't they they were yeah. to be compensated in some fashion. Uh, right. Take so, care of. That is, yeah, they have to be taken care of. They have to be provided for. Because one is, um, some of them may never get married again, depending on their age and, and so forth. Um, they need to be provided for. And that's not just financially. That actually means protection. Right? Because if you're a woman in that age and you're unmarried, um you're, you're fair game yeah yeah you're you're in danger right so you need you need some kind of support right you need protection from from the world um from other men you need you need to be able to to support yourself and so on. so they're going to be provided for so they're not just abandoned and cast out right they're going to be provided for in some way um so exactly and, and the details are going to vary depending on on the circumstances, right, of how that's how that's going to look. I don't know exactly how that looks, but it, it has to be done. So it's done according to the law of divorcement. So even though they're foreign wives, they're going to be divorced in a fair way. Now, of course, they have set up the civil magistrates and judges so that they can do this, right? This was authority that was given to them by Artaxerxes' decree. Right. Prior to that, they didn't really have that authority. That would be done by the Persian courts. But under Artaxerxes' decree, they set up their own magistrates and judges. And they have, you know, they can do the death penalty. They can do banishment. They complete, uh, authority. Yeah, they now have the legal authority given to them by the Persian government. So, but they're going to do this according to the law. Now, now we can apply that, of course, as we're dealing with the divorcement from the strange wives, we do it according to the law. So what is the law that's governing us? And, and how does this parallel of them being provided for, this fair treatment, how does this relate to uh, what this movement is going through at the present time? Um, well, we're asking, well, we We've determined that um, we need to we need to divorce these strange wives, or, or what we call um, uh, theories or uh, uh, worldly ways of of thinking about these things, and get more back into the uh, to the legal aspect, not necessarily legal aspect, but the biblical aspect of it. Right. So, so when we're studying and we're we're sorting through where we made our errors. What, what are the basic problems with why we're drawing wrong conclusions? 
um, it's done according to the law. And that would be Miller's rules, right? That's what we determine. Yeah. So we have, we're following Miller's rules. Now, um, and that means everything's going to be look, looked at and examined in an open light fairly. Right? Well, yeah. Yes. We're not coming to rash judgments. We're looking at everything. We're looking We're at not kicking anybody out. <laughs> right. Yeah. So what Colin has presented, we have to look at fairly what Adilio has presented, what Daniel Fontenot has said, Stephen's studies, my studies, Rand's studies, Dwight's studies. All of these things need to be examined. Um, yes. And they have to be ex studied, examined to Miller's rules. Are we actually following what God has said? Or are we going off, you know, lit by the sparks of our own kindling, right? No, on the last. Yes, on the first. Yeah. We don't want strange fire. We want the fire that comes from God, the Holy Spirit, to be teaching and instructing us. Really? Because we don't want the earth to open up underneath our feet. Yeah. So so when we're looking ahead at this line, like Samson and Delilah, and we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to go through all of these lines. Um, it needs to be clear on, on how we're doing this, that this and what it is we're doing, that, that this whole study of the judges is connected to this spirit uh, um, addressing this spirit that has consumed the movement. Right? And this spirit that has consumed the movement is comes from Parminder, and we can see that on August 29th, 2019, when Delio, Stephen, and John Mark are brought before the tribunal. Um, Did you to, read Aaron's comment? Yeah. Um, yeah, told to recant. So um, here before you condemn, when new light is presented to the church, it is perilous to shut yourselves away from it, refusing to hear because you are prejudiced against the message or the messenger will not make your case excusable, excusable before God. To condemn that which you have not heard and do not understand will not exalt your wisdom in the eyes of those who are candid in their investigations of truth. And to speak with contempt of those whom God has sent with a message of truth is folly and madness. And um, so that's why we're very careful in how we approach our study and, and our conversation and how we deal with others with whom we differ, right? So um, now Heidi and I have been reading uh, Fifth Testimonies. And in Fifth Testimonies, we are at uh, page 60. Um, there is uh, a testimony called Important Testimony. It's dated March 28th, 1882. And last night, um, this is what we read. Um, it says, when we listen to a reproach against our brother, we take up that reproach to the question, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? The psalmist answered, he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. What a world of gossip would be prevented if every man would remember that those who tell him the faults of others will as freely publish his faults at a favorable opportunity. We should endeavor to think well of all men, especially our brethren, until compelled to think otherwise, and we should not hastily credit evil reports. These are often the result of envy or misunderstanding, or they may proceed from exaggeration or a partial disclosure of facts. Jealousy and suspicion, once allowed a place, will sow themselves broadcast like thistledown. Should a brother go astray, then is the time to show your real interest in him. Go to him kindly, pray with and for him, remembering the infinite price which Christ has paid for his redemption. 
In this way, you may save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sins. A glance, a word, even an intonation of the voice may be vital with falsehood, sinking like a barbed arrow into some heart, inflicting an incurable wound. Thus, a doubt, a reproach, may be cast upon one by whom God would accomplish a good work, and his influence is blighted, his usefulness destroyed. Among some species of animals, if one of their number is wounded and falls, he is at once set upon and torn in pieces by his fellows. The same cruel spirit is indulged by men and women who bear the name of Christians. They manifest a pharisaical zeal to stone others less guilty than themselves. There are some who point to others' faults and failures to divert attention from their own or to gain credit for zeal, for great zeal for God and the church. You know, this is, you know, when we look at this situation and we, 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 we're examining uh, this divorce proceedings, the strange wives, it has to be done according to the law. This is not a battle of person against person, right? This is uh, an examination uh, to find the truth and to find something that's fair and just. That is, we're looking at Miller's rules and we want to know what the truth is. Uh, the book and page number is five testimonies. Um, it actually starts on page 58. That's page, page 58, paragraph one. Um, yeah, we're on page 60 now from this morning's reading, but um, <clears throat> I didn't read that part. So in all of this, these proceedings of, of what we are trying to do in, in setting up this camp meeting, I mean, this is an opportunity for us to study together. And... You know, last night I tried to, at, at call and study, I tried to, in, in my way, not very successfully, uh, to have some interest by sharing some things that I thought would, would spark some interest in what it is that we need to do, what is it is that we need to examine. Of course, I ran into a, a bit of a wall. And, you know, part of that has to do with my own personality. So, so that part I own. But, um, the reality is that somehow this movement has to come together. If we don't come to the upper room, right? If we don't take the time to examine what others are studying, if we don't take the time to examine our own hearts, we will be on the outside of things. Doesn't matter how right we are, right? We can't be seeking to, to tear down other people. Right. So there should be nothing in our hearts that is seeking to uh, win an argument or beat someone or show them to be wrong or in error. Right. We should be seeking to find what is correct about what someone is saying. And focus upon on those things. Right. Yes. Yeah. So. And I've stated many, many times what Colin presented on December 25th, 2021, I believe came from God to this movement to be examined by all. And what Odilio presented on February 12th, 2022, that is something that God gave him to be examined by all. We have also had light that God has given us in our morning studies. That is to be examined by all. Dwight has had studies. Stephen has had studies. Iran hasn't presented many studies, but he has been studying and contributing uh, to what we're doing. And, and Daniel Fontenot has studies. And all of these things are relevant. Yes, and not listening to them or not studying them is a serious mistake. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, 
Now, there was a, a comment yesterday that, you know, we're, we're going to have a message to the Levites, and it has to be simple. And, and that is true. That is simple enough for those that are, are willing to study. There's nothing in the Bible that says, or in the spirit of prophecy, so that says that all truth is just simple and easy to understand. There are certain things, like the gospel should be presented so that even a child can understand it. And that's true, right? But it doesn't mean that we just present simple presentations of the gospel, and that's all we study, right? Because then that would make the rest of the Bible meaningless, and all the study of prophecy and dates and chronology meaningless, because little children can't necessarily study all those things and understand them, right? So, uh, so when we're we're approaching this, when we're approaching uh, this study, right? The primary purpose that we're studying, what we're studying, is that this is about the divorcement, right? This is about the first day of the of of the tenth month to the first day of the first month. Now, symbolically on our line, it goes to April fifth, twenty thirty. Whether that's where it goes to, we don't know. But we have to look at this in the long haul, right? That this is not about something that is going to be over in a short period of time. And it's not something that we can relax about. Just because we have, you know, seven years in which to, uh, before this date comes, that we can say, oh, well, you know, I can just go do a bunch of other things and I don't really need to worry because there is the immediate things right now that are going to determine where we're going to end up, where this movement is going to end up, correct? Uh, Theodore, yes. Theodore, can I read a verse? Okay. I don't know if it's revelant or not, but I'm going to read it anyway. It's 24, uh, Job 24. 13 and I think 14 it says they are of those that rebel against the light that knoweth not the way <clears throat> thereof that nor abide in the path there that the murder rises with the light killing the poor and the needy and in the night is as a thief now, I don't know if that's relevant or not, but it just I just thought I'd read it. Okay. Well. Yeah, it's definitely uh it's definitely relevant as far as um there are those that rebel against the light. So they they know not the ways thereof nor abide in the paths thereof. Right. Right. So um so there are people that are seeking to destroy that aren't interested in truth. But the point is we're interested in truth and we're not interested in tearing down our brother. Right. We're not interested in an us and them attitude. Right. I think you misspoke. It's us or them attitude, not an us and them. That's what yeah. we're fighting. We're, that's what we want is the us and them. Us, us or yeah, us or them, right? Well, I think of it as us and them, us against them, but, right? Right. So in the battle, it's us and them, right? There's the two groups, and they're our enemy. And I don't okay. believe that's the case in this divorcement, right? That this is no, not... It's getting rid of the those, um, those ways of studying that aren't like Miller's rules. Yeah, and and part of that though is just the whole the whole way of willing to look and examine something to be a Berean, right? If someone makes a claim, um, you know, we need to we need to recognize that um, we can't just attack the person to dismiss the claim. No, we search the scriptures daily to see if those things are true or not. Yeah. 
Yeah, just one thing to get back to these sidereal months. So a sidereal month is 27.3, right? But notice the decimal, 321, what is that? That's the Sunday law, right? 27.321. Sunday law after 777 years. Whoops. There we go. And then what about 661? That's FFA, isn't it? So if you ever want to remember the length of your sidereal month, just remember the message to the Levites, 27.3, but it's going to be 321, the year of the Sunday law, and then 661, uh, which is FFA. The it's six also interesting if you take just the first three digits. Aren't you looking at 273? Wasn't Didn't that have yeah, some? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, so um there, there's a whole list I have of all these 273s in nature, you know, ratios between the orbit of the moon and the earth and the earth and the sun and, and uh, you know, the, the sizes of these uh, rectangles and triangles and circles and all these different things. But one of them is the, the length of a sidereal month is 27.3. You know, also Calvin is 273 degrees uh, minus 273 degrees degrees celsius um so you have a lot of these 273s that show up in nature um which seems highly unlikely especially these ratios of the earth moon and sun but uh but that's the number for the levites of course um so we can see from 9 11 july 18th is is definitely with this 252 sidereal months, uh, a, a part of the message of, of this movement. You can't separate July 18th from September 11th, 2001. Okay, so let's uh, close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today and be with us this week as we seek to, uh, to finish our study, or at least come close to it, finishing the study of the judges and help us to understand the things that we need to do as we lay out these lines and their structure in relation to each other. Be with each person, be with uh, Colin Odilio, Daniel Fontenot, um, Stephen, uh, Dwight, Iran, and myself is, and others who have presented and um, anyone who to whom light has been given in this movement because we know that each person in this movement has discovered things that are meaningful. And we just pray, Lord, that you can watch over each one and that you can use us to your glory. Help us to be uh, united with you, that we can be reconciled with those who feel they're at odds with us and that we can reconcile uh, with those that we feel that we are at odds with. May your work be done upon this earth. And we May we cooperate with you. Bring us together again to study your word is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.